I wasn't really sure how to tackle this video initially. I mean, a desk is a very subjective thing, and whether you like one or not can depend on a wide variety of different factors. Is it aesthetically pleasing to you? Are its features beneficial to you on a day-to-day -day basis? Is the bloody thing even comfortable to use? These are all questions that can only be answered individually. Fortunately, I have an entire team of people that have been using power-up and squared-up motorized up desks as their daily drivers since Anthology Creative was kind enough to provide us with enough for my editors and hardware testing team. So, the plan is to mix in some of their impressions with my own and present them as a group. So here we go. The Mastercase 5 by Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid-tower PC case your own with a variety of modular parts and accessories. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. I'm not a fan of covering products that make claims about improving your health while you do absolutely nothing to change your lifestyle, and the offers that I've received to review things like the AppBurner 2000 or whatever go straight in the email junk bin where they belong. Standing desks are a little bit different. Number one, they don't claim that you won't have to do anything. They acknowledge up front that you will have to get off your butt and stand up. Number two, and I'll lean on the Mayo Clinic specifically here, but they're not the only reputable source of this information, sitting for long periods of time has been linked, remember this means correlation not causation and they are not the same thing, to a fairly wide variety of health concerns including obesity, increased blood pressure, high blood sugar, abnormal cholesterol levels, and even cardiovascular disease. And three, it is also well established at this point that doing pretty much anything but sitting helps. So while the best thing to do is move around, even at a leisurely pace, periodically throughout the day, pacing while on the phone is a good habit to get into, if you must be at your desk constantly, then standing up is better than nothing. So with that out of the way, let's take a tour of the up desk. Mine is the Series 3 Power Up in the large size to accommodate my ultra wide monitor and aquarium PC, but there are a variety of sizes and finishes, with medium being the best choice for most people, something I guess Anthology Creative knows, since it's the only available size in some of the funky non standard top colors. Not that I'm bitter, I couldn't get the purple polka dotted one. Okay, maybe I am a little bitter. So moving around to the top, we find the regrettably plain black top that is, well, it's plain and black. I'm honestly not really sure what to say about this, but it's one and a quarter inches thick and has a nicely finished laminate surface. The only really notable thing about the top surface is the gently curved user side. This is something I and most of my team like. I put my laptop to my left and stuff I need within reach to my right, but that Terran wishes was straight, since the recess puts him a little closer to his monitors than he'd like. Unfortunately, Updesk doesn't have anything perfectly rectangular or a little bit deeper. The good news here is that if you really wanted to swap out the tabletop, it would be as simple as finding a surface you like and screwing everything else into it. The input module that handles up down, saving and recalling your three preset heights and displaying the current height in inches is the only thing that would likely need to move and the cable it comes with is long enough that it should work with any tabletop that's under the 375 pound capacity of the base unit anyway. Since we're down here, this is probably a good time to look at the rest of the underbelly of this beast. I've done some custom cable management here. The USB power hub, AC power strip, and a power brick for my monitor and laptop were added, but the J-channel management runs come with the desk, as does the large power input and controller module in the middle. This piece takes input from the user and drives the motors that each telescoping support leg is equipped with. This implementation of the motors is, aside from the ability to save and recall height presets, the biggest difference for me between the up desk and the less expensive vert desks that we've used in the past. Not only is the action smoother and quieter, but the legs themselves are much less wobbly in spite of the heavier load of the stock tabletop and because they don't have a drive shaft that connects to both sides with a motor in the middle, the assembly process is much simpler. You can actually see here how long it took for me to assemble a vert desk. 
compared to about half an hour for an up desk. Not to mention that the shaft is impossible to pop out on its own, requiring about an hour for me and Luke to figure out what's going on and repair it. True story, hashtag blame Brandon. On the subject of wobbliness, there's zero that I can perceive at my sitting height, but at my standing height, I did not notice it while using the mouse and using keyboard shortcuts, but I did notice it while typing. I can say that I'm using an extremely heavy monitor, which does exacerbate the issue of monitor wobble. So it's got that going for it, but it was there. One thing I can't make any excuses for though is the Android app to remind you to sit down and stand up at regular intervals. Frankly, it's terrible. The basic functionality actually works, but non-tech savvy users like my mom would get instantly frustrated by tapping on a field, having it bring up a value selector, and then just not filling the field out, even though it did actually end up working once I got it configured, even though I was flying blind. Apparently the iOS one is better, but I'm not on the iPhone right now and I didn't use it anyway. Since there are many third party stand up or break reminder applications out there, including ones that run on your PC. So I don't have to be bothered about it when I'm not actually even at my computer anyway. So conclusion time. If the point is to achieve the health benefits of standing, then there are definitely cheaper fully motorized desk options like the Vert Desk that I have first-hand experience with and the IKEA Bekant or Bekant or however they pronounce that, it means friend apparently, that I unfortunately do not. And there are even bolt-on like workstation jobbies from companies like Ergotron and Anthology Creative themselves. But the solid build quality, extremely wide range of movement that allows everyone from me to Luke to adjust to the perfect working height regardless of our body proportions, and the added creature comfort of being able to pre-program heights has made us extremely happy with these ones. They can apparently even accommodate a treadmill under them if you're into that sort of thing, but I'm hoping that my staff will be happy enough that they have standing desks and enough space in the middle of the room to stash their chairs and won't ask for that yet for now. Speaking of things that might make sense to ask for, what about a mobile carrier that you could pick up a phone and call and there would actually be, okay, this is like someone else having a phone. On, and I know phones don't look like this anymore. Anyway, the point is ting.com. You pick them up, you don't talk to a robot, you get put through directly to a person. You pay only for what you use with the average ting bill coming in at about $24 a month per device. And if you're stuck in a contract and switch to ting, they'll cover 25% of your cancellation fee up to seven. $75. And you might be saying, hold on a second, Lance, what do you mean the average bill is approximately blah, blah, blah? Well, you pay only for what you use. So head over to linus.ting.com and use their savings calculator to find out how much you would likely pay. So you basically put in your last few bills and then you enter how much you used your stuff and then it goes, oh, well, you know, hey, you're actually a pretty light user. You're using a plan that doesn't make any sense for you. Why don't you pay for just what you use? Yeah, that's a concept. It's coming back again. So it basically goes, yeah, you'd be a good Ting candidate, or no, you wouldn't. They're completely upfront about it. And when you sign up at our link, that's linus.ting.com, you'll also get $25 in either service credit or towards a new device. So check it out now. Thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, I think you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, buying a cool t-shirt. Oh, I did my outro wrong, whatever. You can buy a t-shirt. This is not a t-shirt. Uh, we're gonna have a new store for the shirt soon, so that's gonna be cool. And you can even give us a direct lead contribution through our form. You get a little badge next to your name and all that stuff. Now that you're done doing all that, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click that little like button in the top right corner to check out my video of the ultimate gaming monitor, the Acer X34 Predator. Oh. Way to go, Brandon.